football is a culture in the South. It is high school games on Friday, college games on Saturday, NFL on Sunday. My normal Sunday was being in the Superdome, not sitting on the couch watching it on TV. And you can't explain that to people. Why ruin the sport for them? Bailey Davis was a cheerleader for the New Orleans Saints until she was fired this January, she says, for posting this picture on her private Instagram account. And what did they say to you about this picture? They told me it was distasteful. I had a dirty face in it. Bailey Davis has filed a complaint against the Saints and the NFL for gender discrimination. The suit has pushed Bailey into the national spotlight and prompted harassment from online trolls all over the country. I'm Amanda Knox. And having experienced my own version of public shaming, I want to see how women stand up for themselves while facing nationwide scrutiny. I'm here in Ellisville, Mississippi to speak with Bailey Davis. I think that Bailey's case is a fascinating example of the double standards that women face professionally. And I am most interested in how a small town girl takes on something not just as big as the NFL, but something as important to her as the NFL. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Come on, Hi. you look like this little person. Yeah. She's actually got a little Saints jersey. Really? Yeah. Oh. But we retired it. Hi. This is my mom. Oh, can I give you a heart? Welcome. Oh, thank so glad you. Here. Thank you. You have a beautiful yeah, home. Thank you. So let me give you a tour. OK, this is our sports room. This is kind of where all of our autographed stuff is, our memorabilia. These are my brother's signed jerseys. And then this is actually my mom and my dad when my mom was a cheerleader and then when my dad was a football player. Very, I love the retro skirt. Yeah, look at this. Oh. This was hers. These are the bloomers. She's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> She was actually in Super Bowl 95 in a couple months after she found out she was pregnant with me. And so I like to say that I was dancing in the Super Bowl uh. halftime shows before <laughs> I was even born. So I was dancing from day one. This is just a picture of her in the studio growing up. She was there all the time. If I was there, she was there. My mom was the field director for the Saint Stations, so I was always around the Saint Stations. I didn't see the stereotype cheerleader growing up. I saw the real deal, like these incredible women, and so that's why I always had my sights set on Saint Stations. Because she was the coach's kid, she had to work harder than everybody else. I mean, there were hours that she and I would spend at the studio, like choreographing something extra. Um, so she definitely worked very hard. It was a huge deal for my hometown when I made the team. Like, they put me in the local paper, and I was the grand marshal in the Christmas parade. Getting to run out on that field, knowing this is the biggest stage I could be on right now, performing, was just this incredible feeling. How long did it feel great before you started registering, like, red flags? Red flags were popping up in the beginning. We would have weigh-ins every month, and so everyone was so concerned. Like, you wouldn't eat that day. You would not drink anything because you had to be your weight that you were at auditions, or you could be benched. I would hear things going on, and there was girls that would sweat themselves out in the car before weigh-ins and before practices, and I was just, like, blown sweat away. Sweat themselves out? Yeah, there was one practice where a girl sweated herself out in the car and um, she passed out and she had to go to the hospital. The director told us to get the ambulance to park on the side so no one would know. We're told all the time, we can't just turn off Saint Stations. You know, we need to wear makeup at all times, even to the gym. We had to have our nails manicured at all times. We had to have a spray tan for games and appearances. We had to pay for all of that. We had to pay for our practice shoes, manicures, spray tans, to have our hair colored the color that it was supposed to be. Do you mind if I ask how much you were getting paid? I was making $10 an hour. In addition to rules about their appearances, the Saint Stations had a handbook of guidelines about how they were supposed to behave. Everything was very controlled, and even our social media, we couldn't post semi-nude, nude, or lingerie. 
The big one, no fraternization. We couldn't talk to the football players. We couldn't follow them on social media. We couldn't be caught anywhere where a football player was. I was told that is the case because they're protecting us. We're supposed to just kind of hide ourselves and not be known by them. Um, Wait, were the football players also told they weren't supposed to talk to you? No, the football players did not have that role. And I didn't find that out until I was fired. There was a rumor that there was a girl at a party with a player, and word got around that it was me. I told Human Resources that it wasn't true. And then about four days later, I posted the picture in the bodysuit, and I got a text from my coach very poor judgment to post something like this, especially considering the rumors going around about you. I go to work the next day and my mom comes in the office and she says, they want you to resign. I was very confused because I showed more skin on the field than that picture. And I said, I'm not gonna resign because I don't think I did anything wrong. Usually they don't question anything. They just get rid of the girl. We're disposable. They tell us all the time, there's a hundred girls that would do your job for free. They told my mom she needed to come to the meeting, which was weird because my mom never had anything to do with discipline. We rode together, I packed my bag, we went to the meeting. He said, you wanted a meeting with me? And I said, yes, sir, I wanna know why I was asked to resign. And from that point on, I never got to tell my side. He laid into me about my character and that I was representing the team in a bad way. One of the things he said was perception is reality. So basically how he sees the photo is how it is. He sees it as something sexual and dirty and seeking attention. He told me he would never let his granddaughters post something like that. I wasn't ashamed of the picture. I didn't see the picture in a sexual way. I wasn't trying to get a man's attention like they accused me of. I don't think there's anything wrong even if I wanted to be sexy. It's almost like we can market you this way, but you can't do it on your own because we're not making money that way. I was completely slut-shamed out of that room, and I had never felt so worthless about myself. What was the hardest part for you, seeing what Bailey was going through? I couldn't fix it. Of course, my heart hurt for her because they were always told, you know what, well, if you get kicked off this squad, you can forget about going to any other squad because we all talk, mm -hmm. you know, and pretty much you're done. This is stuff I can't keep in my room. Like, I can't. They wanted me to put the football on the shelf, but I just, I can't. But this is um, my little football that they gave me. I am a diehard Saints fan. I didn't just make the team and say, hey, like, now I'm a Saints fan. Like, it was my whole life. Two, three, four, and five. Since her firing, six, Bailey seven, had to move back eight, to her hometown. Yeah. Her mother resigned from coaching shortly thereafter. Now, they're both living in Ellisville, teaching dance at a local studio. Now, in a civil rights complaint with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, Davis argues the Saints have two sets of rules, one for its female cheerleaders and another for its male players. I've brought a claim against the Saints and the NFL for gender discrimination, and I'm hoping for equality. The things I experienced changed my life and changed the way I see myself, and no young girl should ever go through that. Bailey has offered to settle her claim against the NFL in exchange for a single dollar and a good faith meeting with the NFL commissioner. The NFL rejected the settlement offer, but discussions over a solution are ongoing. Bailey has also launched an online campaign for gender equality in sports called Level the Playing Field, which has brought support and scrutiny to her case. When the story broke and it started on social media and, you know, the news, I had to shut my phone off. I was fired, I was humiliated, and the picture's never going away. You can't control what people are saying. And because I know most of the time that there was a comment about her, it wasn't too long before there was a comment about me. It's a weird feeling having people that don't know you have all these opinions about you. Does the town feel bigger or smaller after everything that happened? It feels smaller. Yeah. 
I was really nervous, especially since I was like shamed. I thought my community was gonna shame me, but it was like the opposite. I've had support from the fans and my community, but no support from the girls. The girls on my team have completely cut me out of their lives. I lost all of my best friends. They were told not to speak about it. I understand no one likes change, but this is for them, and I hope one day they realize it. How has it changed you guys? Like, how are you changed by this? I think one of the biggest things is I've been labeled as a feminist, and for me in the South, like, that's not a thing. I've been in contact with the Time's Up movement, and they've been very supportive. I'm aware of all these issues now and where we need to go. And before, you know, I just would have turned my head to it. If anything, Bailey's story shows that women's rights are a discussion not just happening in big urban areas, but are finding their way into the smallest rural corners of this country. This is a conservative small town in the Bible Belt of Mississippi. The discussion is happening everywhere.